Hi guys, it is a beautiful day here in the drought plagued flood ravaged wasteland of South Austin, Texas here on Saturday, November 9th, 2013. I'm just acting like I'm hanging out on the beach in Costa Rica on this beautiful day and I just finished my ecological meltdown roundup rant a day late and nowhere in it and all these stories I went over what's going on on this planet not once was Fukushima ever mentioned so this is just my latest in the progression of Fukushima articles where I guess Ham on Little Tail is going to eat a little bit of crow which I don't mind doing when when I start being convinced I, I am trainable guys uh, so anyone who follows me has been watching this, uh, the progression for this doomsday prophet environmental alarmist uh, and the chronicler of the downfall of global industrial civilization. Going back almost to the beginning of uh, Fukushima, I have been kind of making light of it making light of it, you know, doing these joke videos about this clown, this, this Alex Jones fear-mongering Kool-Aid drinker, Mike Adams, the health ranger, talking about how the Northern Hemisphere was going to go down uh, with Fukushima by the, by the end of 2012, you know, making all of these, uh, and, I, and I was laughing him off, and uh, so then, as recently as I think it was six or eight weeks ago, I was still joking about Fukushima. And I think I did a rant why this uh, eco-Nazi doesn't have his panties in a wad about Fukushima, where I was basically lumping the danger that being posed to this planet Fukushima is about equal to chemtrails. Uh, then... Maybe, when was it, guys? Uh, a week or ten days ago, I, I went from that side of the fence to on the fence about Fukushima as more and more evidence was pouring in by more and more people that, uh, that this planet, at least the northern half of it, uh, we are, more and more people are joining the chorus that the human race, if not the planet, is under, right now, today, under the most direct threat in the history of humanity as those bumbling idiots over there at uh, TEPCO uh, start to remove these fuel rods and what that can mean, uh, what that can mean if they screw this job up, which they will. What it means, more and more people are claiming what that means is literally Japan is getting ready to be blown off the map. And if, you're, if you live at least on the west coast of the United States, I guess anywhere from uh, San Diego to Seattle, well, San Diego to Vancouver, that you should be packing your bags and putting a for sale sign. Uh, I don't know what this is going to do to real estate values on the west coast of the U.S., but it sure is doing good for real estate values in the southern hemisphere where I happen to own three acres of land on the east coast of the, uh, on the east slope of the Andes Mountains in the southern hemisphere, which I have pretty much decided to take off the market and not sell. Uh, so anyway, a week or 10 days ago, I was up on the fence. Well, guys, you will be, I think, happy to learn that Ham on Little Tail is now on the other side of the fence. On the other side of the fence, I am now on the Fukushima fear-mongering doomsday prophecy side of the fence. I was getting damn close to it 
on uh, on Wednesday when I was doing my climate change meltdown rant, where going on, I was showing where on the mainstream media, this is beginning to creep into the mainstream media. I was reading interviews with Arnie Gunderson and uh, Harvey Wasserman and the mainstream media here on Wednesday. Uh, 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 about the apocalyptic scenario that is unfolding over there in Japan that could destroy the life uh, in the northern hemisphere. People who know a lot more about it than I do. So guess what finally put me over the fence, guys? It happened Thursday night. I've been busy. This is the first time I've been able to bring the rant. It was it was midnight Thursday night that Hambone Little Tail fell off the Fukushima fence. And it was Alex Jones who brought this article to my attention. Alex Jones quoting my hero, David Suzuki. When guys, when when Alex Jones is, is quoting David Suzuki, you know this planet is in trouble. You need to understand that Alex Jones and David Suzuki on environmental issues are, are oil and water, to put it mildly. They are in complete opposite ends of the spectrum on every single environmental issue on this planet except one of them and that is Fukushima. Alex Jones and his and his little lieutenant Mike Adams have been saying for the past year and a half that that this shit uh, un unfolding in Fukushima could be the single biggest threat to this planet and I've been laughing at them but now we have Alex Jones cheering on David Suzuki's new interview in the Huffington Post. This is, this is how crazy this planet has gotten. Alex Jones quoting David Suzuki in the Huffington Post where uh, David came out a few days, I guess this was Wednesday or Thursday, there is both the article in Huffington Post, which I'll put the link, and that will link you up to a YouTube video that, uh, that Alex was linking you up to, to where David Suzuki, my hero, my hero is now on the Alex Jones uh, Harvey Wasserman, uh, I'm, I'm having a brain fart, Arnie Gunderson bandwagon, and, uh, so I will put the link, so I, I was going to play the video, but I couldn't figure out how to do it from out here in my chair, so I will just read, this is David Suzuki's Fukushima warning is dire and scary. Right here in the mainstream media, my hero showing up. Okay. David Suzuki has issued a scary warning about Japan's Fukushima nuclear plant saying that if it falls in a future earthquake or if they screw up uh, trying to fix that problem, it is, quote, bye-bye Japan, quote, and the entire west coast of North America should be evacuated. So David Suzuki, he is, I guess his parents were Japanese. Okay, so what did, uh, did uh, David say in this video? Okay, here, an excerpt from the, uh, for this YouTube video shows Suzuki outlining a frightening scenario that would result from the destruction of the nuclear plant. Whether it's caused by an earthquake or by, this is the thing, they're in an absolutely damned if you do and damned if you don't 
scenario here, guys. If they don't fix the problem, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when that son of a bitch is coming down, uh, blowing off 14,000 14, Hiroshima-level nuclear bombs, uh, blowing Japan off the map, and, and that shit's rolling, that radiation wave rolling right on to the, to, it, it, there's no way. Uh, their only hope of this, it, guys, we're screwed. Okay. Quoting David Suzuki, if you don't want to believe me and Alex Jones and all these other guys, here it is out of David Suzuki's mouth. Quote, Fukushima is the most terrifying situation I can imagine. Three out of the four plants were destroyed in the earthquake and the tsunami. The fourth one has been so badly damaged that the fear is if there is another earthquake of a seven or above that that building will go and then all hell breaks loose and the probability of such an earthquake in the next three years is over 95 percent so even david suzuki agrees that we've got to get those fuel rods out of harm's way and that is when he blasts in to uh to tepco and the and the government of japan they don't quite that the quote in here I love that. Uh, well, I can't remember. Did he say TEPCO or the government of Japan? This is a direct quote that I remember. Are lying through their teeth. If you believe one word of the bullshit, bullshit coming out of the government of Japan and certainly out of the mouths of TEPCO, pull your head out of your ass. And so apparently they're moving ahead with this, guys. So this is what he talks about. Okay. Suzuki said that an international team of experts needs to go in to the, the Fukushima plant and help fix the problem. But the Japanese government has, quote, too much pride to admit that. I have seen the paper which says that if, in fact, the fourth plant goes under in an earthquake and those rods are exposed, or I don't know why they're not... Anyway, what he was saying, it doesn't matter whether it's an earthquake or TEPCO screwing it up. It is bye-bye Japan and everybody on the west coast of North America should evacuate. If that is not terrifying, I don't know what is. And Suzuki's warming uh, came as radiation from the Fukushima plant has, has already been detected in Alaska and along the west coast. So there you go, you're hearing it now, and uh, this planet has gotten to the point that we are having Alex Jones quoting David Suzuki in the mainstream media, that, that, that we have screwed up, guys, and, and, and I have to remind you that David Suzuki is jumping on the anti-nuclear fence I believe it was the same day or it was within 24 hours that you had that I was ranting about also on Wednesday that my hero James Hansen and these other uh, climate change guys uh, you know cheerleading on more nuclear power plants James Hansen Bill McKibben James Lovelock and more and more of these uh, uh, of these great environmentalists who understand 
that climate change from the burning of fossil fuels is going to kill us all. That and and so they're saying that the risks uh, of of nuclear power are less than the risks of, of of fossil fuel power plants, be it coal, certainly coal, oil, or clean burning natural gas. They understand that the burning of fossil fuels is going to destroy this planet. It is not a matter of if, it is a matter of when. And so on the same day that you got, uh, or within the, within the 72 hour period of my hero David Suzuki talking about Fukushima and the dangers of nuclear energy, you have my other set of her heroes talking about the dangers of burning fossil fuels. Guys, they are both right. Do you get it? David Suzuki and James Hansen are both right. The burning of fossil fuels will take this planet down. Nuclear power will take this planet down. And I am going to wrap up this, this rant from this side from my new position on the fear-mongering side of the Fukushima fence the same way I closed my rant up three days ago on my climate change rant. Guys, everybody is right. We need to cease and desist today the burning of fossil fuels and the use of nuclear power. The only problem with that is if we cease and desist the use of the burning of fossil fuels and nuclear power today, with or without Fukushima blowing, global industrial civilization will collapse and the population of this planet within six months will be where it needs to be, which is one billion or less people. Because the only way to solve this energy trap that we are in, no matter which way we go, is, is going to kill us all. And all of you little dreamers about your goddamn solar energy and your wind energy, shut up! Jesus, pull your head out of your ass. Uh, we need to get the population of this planet down to one billion or less people, which Fukushima might be doing for us in the next six weeks. We might not even have to wait six months to bring the population of this planet down, bring the demand side, the demand on energy requirements of this planet down to one billion or less people. So truly renewable uh, resources such as solar and wind and all of that stuff can support a population of one billion or less people where we don't need fossil fuels or nuclear energy until we start having this discussion on this planet about what we need to do about what's going on on this planet, which is to reduce the population of this planet by 90%, thereby reducing the demand for energy by 90%. We have no chance. Smoke them if you got them. If Fukushima and nuclear energy don't get us first, fossil fuels will in 30 or 40 years Take your choice, guys. We're, we're done for. This global industrial civilization is done for, uh, which would, could lead me into my whole shutting down the grid rant, but I'm going to make that a separate one for another day as we move into this shutting down the grid test on coming up on Wednesday but I will have another rant about that sometime between now and Wednesday. For this rant, from this side, this is your new convert. I'm converted to you, Alex. Wanting to know. 
This is your doomsday prophet, environmental alarmist, and the down and the chronicler of the downfall of global industrial civilization saying bye guys.